Happy Friday! Thanks for joining me for another Five Things Friday. This week, I am tackling five writer questions. I know we've done reader questions before, but if you're a writer and you're working on a project right now, this might be the episode for you. I'm so thrilled to be spending a Friday with you. Thanks for joining me for these little snippets of fun on your Friday. This week, I have gathered writer questions. I know that we've done a variety of reader questions, but over the course of these Five Things Fridays, I've done a few episodes geared toward new and aspiring writers, or even writers who are in the trenches right now. And so I've gone through some of the previous episodes and pulled questions that I have been asked along the way, and I thought I would share five of them with you today because they're all very relevant. All right, so let's get right to it. Starting with question number one. This came from Courtney, Cortagonist. I've talked about her amazing bookish YouTube and Instagram channels before. She asked about avoiding burnout. How do you avoid burnout as a writer? I know that's been a huge issue for me because one of the things that I do is I write a lot of books over the course of every year. I am very vigilant about my time off. And so for me, that happens in two ways. The first is I'm really structured in my day. So I treat writing like a job. It is my job, but I treat it like a job. So when I'm done with my word count at the end of the day, I close my laptop and I walk away and I go and I, you know, maybe enjoy a nice glass of lemonade out on my deck or I read a book or I go out for a walk or I hang out with friends or my husband or my family, whatever. Um, I'm very clear about when I'm done writing every day, I'm done. I'm done with work and I'm closing that part of my headspace off. So that's part one of question number one. Part two of avoiding burnout is making sure you add breaks in. I think breaks rejuvenate our brain and build all that great creative energy too. So for me, I am not writing at all this summer. Um, because I'm so structured and perhaps maybe a little OCD about my daily writing schedule, that means that I build breaks into the summer. So over the summer, I am not working on a new manuscript. I'm going to spend a lot of time reading. I'll do some research. I definitely have some editing to do because I have two new books coming out soon and two new books to deliver. Um, but what my summer looks like is a little bit more low key. I'm not pounding away every day trying to hit a word count. And I learned that the hard way. When I first started writing, I was writing 24 seven and I wasn't giving myself a break or any time away. And I quickly learned that was not advantageous to my writing or just to my general health and well-being. So I think finding a way to work breaks into your writing schedule is the key to avoiding burnout. I find that when I'm taking time this summer to do other things versus, you know, a daily word count, I just, I find so many new inspiring ideas. So my whiteboard is growing with new ideas too. So that's kind of the pro of avoiding burnout. Okay. Number two comes from Pamela. She asked, how do you know when your book is ready to submit to a publisher? Oh, Pamela, <sighs> never. I mean, is that just a terrible answer? But really that's the truth. Never, ever, ever, ever. I am always so excited. Like I get this eager anticipation when I know that I'm about to send a book off to my editor. And then the minute I hit send, that eager anticipation is immediately replaced with dread. Um, and you would think 20 something books later that would change. It really hasn't. I think as writers, you know, our whole goal is constantly to improve our craft. And for me, I always want to think of like, how could I say something differently or show that character's emotional depth or range. And granted, I know, I know I'm writing cozy mysteries, but nonetheless, like I want it to be the best cozy mystery you can possibly read. And I am my own worst critic. So my best piece of advice in terms of knowing when something's ready to submit is just kind of trust your instinct. I will get to a point with a book where I start to feel like I have touched this so many times. I can't really see anything different or how I could improve upon it. And when I get to that point, 
that's when I know it's ready to submit. If we're talking about a brand new book that you're just getting ready to send out on query to agents or maybe to um, a small press or something, I would say the most crucial piece would be making sure that you've had quite a few sets of critiques. So that means constructive feedback from other writer friends, maybe um, from some readers who you know like this genre and can give you a fresh set of eyes. I definitely do not think you should ever send something off even me multiple books in I always have early readers and other people look at my work to make sure I can get some perspective before I send it off so that's probably your number one tip is uh, make sure you have other people looking at it people who you trust who will give you constructive feedback on making your work stronger and then once you get to the point where you're like Ugh, I don't know how else to make it better send it off and then do a little dance and know that maybe there'll be a little panic that ensues, but that's just part of the joy of the wave of writing. <laughs> okay, number three comes from the Reading Writing Puppet um, on YouTube who asked, um, wanting to know more about the steps on how to find an agent. Oh, I could do a whole workshop and I'm planning one. It's in the works on how to query an agent. So stay tuned. I know quite a few of you asked about my online classes and workshops and they are coming, but remember how we just talked about the fact that I have to finish those books so that I can have my summer break. Well, that took priority. So one of my summer projects is also going to be doing more work on classes. So stay tuned, but I digress in the short term agents. I think the best thing that you can do in terms of finding an agent, first and foremost, is to write the best book possible. So that ties back to question number two, which is knowing when it's ready to submit. Do all of that work. The stronger your work is, the more tight and ready for market your book is, the more success you're gonna have in finding an agent. So that's kind of my caveat. but. My other part two of this question is go to a writer's conference or a workshop. A lot of them happen over the summer. There are a ton happening this summer here in the Pacific Northwest, and it is a great way to A, meet agents, and if nothing else, just practice your pitch. You don't even have to pitch an agent. You can sign up for workshops um, and sessions where you go and you query agents. You have this like round robin of agents where you go from table to table and you pitch your concept. You can do that if you feel ready and or if you feel like you just kind of want feedback on where you're at in the process. Process, but you can also go to a conference and just attend a pitching workshop. They're great because it's going to be a room full of other writers, writers like you who are starting out, who are terrified with, you know, shaky hands. I'm talking about myself here when I went to my first pitching workshop, um, but you can learn so much about how to write a query and also just in really listening and paying attention to feedback that you might get from the room. So I think that's always a great way. If there's not a writer's conference around you this summer, maybe Maybe um, look in your local paper or for your local writers group and see if you can get a group together and do that yourself. Or if nothing else, just rope in a few friends, sit them down in your living room and give them your pitch and see if, what they think. Like, are their eyes glazing over? Do they understand what your novel's about? Like, that's kind of the first step, I think, in refining a query letter. I hope that helps. There's going to be a lot more to come on that, though, so stay tuned. Okay. Number four, Shelly asked, how do you come up with character names? Do you know from the start what your character's names are going to be? And the short answer to that question is no. In fact, I think I responded to this on social media, but I, when I was working on the first book in the Bake Shop series, Meet Your Baker, I was halfway through the book before I realized that Juliet was going to be Juliet, AKA Jules. I, I had a couple different placeholder names, none of which felt like Jules, and it wasn't until I was about halfway through the manuscript that it was like this aha moment. In fact, my very dear friend sent me the idea. Um, she had read 
maybe I was part, I, now I'm gonna have to go back and look because maybe I was more than halfway through. Maybe I was through the first draft and she was reading the first draft for me, see, early readers, and she was like, what if it's Juliet? And I was like, yes, of course, why didn't I think of that sooner? Um, so sometimes names will appear like gifts from the, you know, I don't know, cosmos or from your dear friends, or sometimes what I will do with character names as I will go to like babynames.com and look up popular and then not popular names from different decades. And those will usually inspire me. You could go find an old baby book at your local used bookstore. And I have quite a few that have dog-eared pages of like, oh yeah, that could be a name for uh, the future. One note of caution, especially if you're gonna write a mystery is start early saving charts of names for all of your suspects because I'm constantly finding myself going, wait, did I have a Drew before? Did I have an Ethan? Like, yeah. But names are fun and give yourself permission to know that they might change. I think one of the greatest gifts of writing is that our characters like evolve and they become themselves on the page over time. And that has definitely happened to me. Last but not least, question number five comes from Kara. Kara asked, how do you get permission to research settings? So um, I, that's kind of the global question. Her question was more specific in terms of like, did I just go into a bakery and say, hey, I'm thinking about writing this mystery that would be set in a bake shop. Could I come in and watch and maybe shadow some of your pastry chefs for the day? And the answer to that question is yes. Absolutely, yes. Don't be afraid to ask. Like if you're writing a book about space, it might be a little harder to get in touch with NASA, but you could definitely get in touch with your local community college's science department. And I'm sure there is someone there who teaches physics or astrophysics or some component of space research. Um, clearly, I am not writing a book about space um, who you could reach out to and who would gladly spend an hour with you. I always offer to buy people coffee, thank them for their time. Um, usually I offer then if said book is ever published to thank them in acknowledgments. So, you know, you want to share some gratitude and love back into the world. But I have found that People are so eager and excited to not only tell their stories, but to share what they know. I have rarely had an instance in which I have called and asked someone if I could come do a little research uh, where they have said no. And that was early on, long before I had publishing contracts. I would just like, you know, go, okay, I need to find somebody who hikes and I'd call up a hiking club and lo and behold, suddenly I'm out in the gorge and I'm learning more than I ever thought I could imagine about like search and rescue. I do have a very, very funny story. Um, and that is when I was working on my first book ever, my first mystery ever published, Scene of the Climb, my Pacific Northwest series. I, at this point in time, have no book contract. I am in the middle of just like starting the idea of this mystery. I had never written a mystery before. I have no street cred whatsoever. And I had gotten up to the point in which the murder happens. And this is no spoilers if you haven't read that series, but Meg, my little bumbling journalist protagonist, uh, hikes up to the top of Angel's Rest and then she sees a body fall off the top of the cliff. I, I've told this story before, but I hiked Angel's Rest probably six or seven times over the course of like multiple months and, you know, took copious notes about smells and landscapes and views and like offshoots of deer trails, all kinds of stuff. I, I had that research down. Well, I started writing the book after I had done all those hikes and had been out there and had been really inspired. And I got to the point where the murder happens, where the body falls off the cliff. And I realized like, I don't know who comes, like who would show up? Is it the police? Is it search and rescue? Hood Rivers um, or Angel's Rest is kind of out by Hood River in the Columbia Gorge. So it's far from Portland, but like, I don't know, is it a county sheriff? Who is it? So here's naive me. I just like do a quick Google search and I find the Hood River County Sheriff's Office and I call them up and I say, hey, I'm, I'm working on this book and I'm just curious like who would come if, if somebody fell off the top of the cliff. And they were incredible. They gave me so much information. They connected me with the Crag Rats, this group of mountain volunteers. Like I, I had this whole like dissertation on an hour long phone call with the sheriff's office. It was incredible. And then I kid you not, 
two days later, someone fell off of Angel's Rest. And my husband was like, you know what's gonna happen? They're gonna come to the door and be like, uh, ding dong, yeah, hello, ma'am, you were just talking about the fact that you're wondering how a body might fall and who would come, it was terrible. Um, but great, <laughs> at the same time. Not great that someone fell off the cliff, I'm not saying that, but it was very um, symbiotic, shall we say, in terms of my research and timing. Long story short, if you want to know anything, just ask. I find that people are so open and willing to share their knowledge and anything that you can do to lend credibility and depth to your writing is gonna make it that much stronger when you're ready to pitch it or to submit it. <laughs> I hope that if you are writing as we speak, or you have a project in your head for a summer writing extravaganza, these tips will be helpful to you. And as always, thanks for joining me for another Five Things Friday. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell to get notified whenever I share new videos. Comment below if you have other questions for me on writing and if you have specific topics that you're looking forward to seeing in my online class series because they're in the works as we speak, so there are still things I could add. Happy Friday.